Okay, so uh, today we will talk about is uh, go over a biochemistry and uh, uh, talk about glycolysis and uh, citric acid cycle. And also we do the calculation of how many ATP generates. And then we also call, talk about the substrate level phosphorylation, oxidative phosphorylation, just kind of like a review the biochemistry stuff what we have, because usually it's a warm up section to talk about food chemistry. Okay. So first of all, uh, when we talk about uh, um, aerobic respiration, now first of all, uh, aerobic respiration, if we are defined using electron transport, could be defined as if the electron donor is organic chemical and electron acceptor is inorganic chemical and this inorganic chemical is oxygen and this is called aerobic respiration. And if we want to talk a little bit more, you know, if electron donor is organic chemical, if the electron acceptor is in or inorganic chemical, but it is other than oxygen, let's say sulfide, this is we call it uh, an aerobic respiration. And we also know if electron donor is organic chemical and the electron acceptor is also organic chemical. Then what is that? What is this process called? This process called fermentation. Now fermentation, we will mention later on when we talk about wine, making beer, brewing, and also a little bit of cheese and the vinegar manufacturing later on, we will talk about fermentation, okay? Anaerobic respiration, basically, we're not gonna talk about here. In my general microbiology class, we mentioned a little bit. So today, we're gonna focus on is uh, aerobic respiration. Okay, so I'm going to remove this definition. Okay, so what is the overall picture of the aerobic respiration? This is basically is coming from a glucose. Going through a process is a branch reaction. This is called glycolysis. They generate what kind of products? is two units of the pyruvates. And then the pyruvates will go through a cycle. This is called citric acid cycle. And will generate a bunch of, a large number of the ATPs. This is what we're gonna talk about today, okay? It's the overview picture. Now let's talk about these one by one. So first of all, we're gonna talk about glycolysis. Okay, so let's go all these detailed steps and all these chemicals. Number one, glycolysis. Now what are the steps of glycolysis? Glycolysis, we first are gonna talk about on the top. This is we call it an investment phase. We also call it six carbon phase. Then these two branch, we call it three carbon payoff phase. So basically, at the beginning, we are using ATPs. And later on, at the payoff phase, we are generating ATPs. This is like you do some of the investment, 
let's say you buy a stock, okay, then you get the money back. So you have to do some investments first. At the end of the day, you get some of the benefits. So this is the glycolysis. So what are they? Let's draw the number, and then we write a structure, okay? First of all is glucose. Glucose will become glucose 6-phosphates. Now in here, I will use just P to talk about represent phosphate, and also we're going to talk about is phosphorylation or phosphoryl. I'll just use a P uh, to represent that. The glucose 6-phosphates. Then we become fructose 6-phosphates. And then go down, become fructose 1, 6 by phosphates. Okay, now what are gonna be the structure looks like? So glucose, if we want to draw on the top, it is a six carbon H O H H O H goes on top O H hydroxy hydrogen bonds go OH H and on the top is C H2 O H okay that's glucose and we know that we can label them for the carbon number carbon number one carbon number two three four five and six okay so when they become glucose six phosphates uh, I'm gonna remove this and uh, draw a little bit, a little bit large line. Okay. So go down here. We're gonna become glucose six phosphates. So what that means? Is there is a phosphate. It's gonna be attached to the six units of the carbon. So what are gonna be looks like? So very simple, we're still going to draw it. So H, O, H, H, O, H, O, H, H, O, H, H. And right here, we will have a P, O, 3. Now this process, since you have a phosphate attached to it, to the six carbon, of course, we need some help for, our, for the phosphates. So where do they come from? They all come from an ATP, hydrolyzed become an ADP. Therefore, they release a phosphates, and these phosphates can be using and attached to that, attached to it. Okay, that's glucose six phosphates. Now, what is the enzyme for that? The enzyme called hexokinase. Now, make sure when we talk about the hexokinase, it's usually for UK youths, animals, plants, and human beings. For bacteria, it is different. It is actually we going through group transport. So if you look at the microbiology book, it's different. Okay, so hexokinase is usually for UK youths, animals, and the plants. So in here, we just write hexokinase. In my other class, I usually talk about the group transport. Okay, glucose 6-phosphates. Then we will become fructose 6-phosphates. Now, what, is, what it is looks like? Okay, when you see that, this will be changed. Some will become like this. And then we have CH2OH, OH, then go OH, H, OH, H, then go H, and CH2O. Here is a P there. 
Okay, this is fructose 6-phosphate. This is what looks like what? The molecular weights are the same, and the chemical components are the same. The only difference is the structure is not the same. So the enzyme we call it isomerase. Okay, so we're using the enzyme called the isomerase. It has a full name, probably called the phosphofructose isomerase, something like that. You only need to know it's an isomerase. Then we go down. We're going to become uh, fructose 1, 6, by phosphate. Okay, what are it going to be looks like? Right here, you can add a phosphate. Is that right? How about the 1? That's why we call it a 1, 6. This is carbon number 1, carbon number 6. And we both can add a phosphate. So fructose 1, 6, by phosphate. The structure is easy. If you know the first one, you know the second one. That will be CH2OP, and then here, the OH, OH, H, H, OH, goes here, CHO, CH2O, that will be a B. Okay, this, of course, sorry, that's OH. Here will be H. Okay. Now, what's the enzyme for that? Is it like kinase? Phosphofructokinase. Yes. Phosphofructokinase. Okay. You want phosphofructokinase. Okay. When you look at here, we had a 1 phosphate so at fructose 6 phosphate. Fructose 1 6 by phosphate, we have another phosphate. Where that comes from? Yeah, the same thing. ATP hydrolyzed become ADP at the phosphates, and that phosphate is connected to here. Okay, that phosphate is actually not here, connected to here. Okay? So, this is a six carbon area. We call it the investment. How many ATP we used? It is minus two ATPs. Okay, so this number we need, we circle it. We hydrolyzed, we used two ATPs. When you look at the fructose with six biphosphates, this structure, do you kind of feel it, it can break down? Because it's very saturated, and you can break down in the center. Sometimes you think about the structure looks like that. Okay? Therefore, we go into a next stage. We go to uh, fructose 6-phosphate, 1,6-biphosphate, and go into the three carbon payoff phase. So what it looks like? So I'm going to write on the top is... Um, just go on the top. Okay, here is very simple. This side I write a chemical, this side I write a structure. Now you need to know it's two lines. Okay, so. Fructose one six five phosphates. Okay, we're gonna go two lines. Let's go there. The first one is Glycerol behind HY three phosphates. Then they become one three by phosphor glycerate. Then they become three phosphoglycerate then they become 2 phosphoglycerate then they become phosphoeno or eno pyruvate and the last one is 
pyro weight. Now, don't forget, sometimes the ground zero dehyde the three phosphates, they have a transition step. Okay, that transition step I usually draw like here. There is a tra transition step. It is called the hydroxyacetal phosphates. Should be dihydroxyacetal phosphate. Okay, let's start. Now what it looks like. What is glycerodehyde three phosphates? Uh, let me use another color. CHO, go down here, H, O, H, and C, H, 2, O, phosphates. Now, what about the dihydroxyacetal phosphate looks like? This is C, H, 2, O, H. Say there is a ketone structure, CO and then CHO, O phosphates. This is also the same structure, exactly the same, different, different structure, exactly the same chemicals. So this is also we call it some ice, uh, using an isomerase to do. Okay. Now from the fructose. 1,6-biphosphate to the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates. What is that? We call it a glyceraldehyde fructoaldolase. Aldolase. Okay. Okay. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates then become 1,3-biphosphoglycerol. What it looks like? P. C O H H and then C H O O P. One three biphosphoglycerate. Going through here, there is something gonna happen. Where is that phosphate comes from? Okay. It is ADP become ATP. And with a phosphate. At the same time, this happened. Yes, glyceraldehyde, uh, glyceraldehyde phosphokinase. Okay, so there is a kinase. And also happened is NAD is reduced to NADH2. Okay? So when 3 biphosphoglycerate, they become 3 phosphoglycerate. What are going to be looks like? This will be COOH, COOH, H, and CH2. OP. That is 3 phosphoglycerate. What's the enzyme for that one? Do you remember what's the enzyme for that one? Sorry, here I messed it up. This is phosphoglycerate D high. Georgianase. And this is phosphoglycerate kinase. Okay. Three phosphoglycerates then become two phosphoglycerates, what it looks like. Phosphoglycerate. 
Okay, what is L? First of all, can I say it? Mutates. Okay. Then two phosphoglycerate become phosphoenol enol pyruvate. What is that? C O O H C O C H two. Look at here, their phosphates is gone. Where they go? ADP and PR become ATP. Is that right? How about right here? Phosphoenol pyruvates become pyruvate. Let's become pyruvates. That's a pyruvate kinase. Do you need a do you need a eight eight ATP? Yes. There is a ADP generate becomes an ATP right here. Okay. So the whole process here, what happened? These are the places which is, has ATP generate. Why is there different color? These two, the same as these two, is different mechanism. This is called the substrate level phosphorylation. And when on the top, if you connect it to Arabic respiration, it is oxidative phosphorylation. So that's why it is different. Okay, now how many ATPs they generate? Here we are assuming NAD reduced to NAD H2 generates three ATPs. Now this is all the time. Right now, when we consider oxygen phosphate ratio, we say it's generate 2.5 ATPs. Okay, now here where we do the calculation, we're gonna speak to this guy. Okay, so how many ATP generate here? If there's a two situation, number one, as part of aerobic respiration, then how many ATP generate? That is three ATPs add by one and one. So add one ATP, add another ATP. Since we have two lines, so multiply by two equals 10 ATPs. And we use the two ATPs at the investment stage. So payoff stage, how many ATP generate? It's gonna be minus two ATPs. That equals eight ATPs. So this is we generate through the payoff stage. Okay, this generates with three carbon, three carbon, and that's what in a six carbon area. That's as part of aerobic respiration, and this number we needed. Now, how about in your textbook? Most of the time, when we when we talk about uh, glycolysis, we say is as part of fermentation. Which means in the absence of oxygen, no how many ATPs? We're not gonna consider that part. So then the calculation will become one ATP, add one ATP, two line multiplied by two, and will be minus two ATPs. So how many total ATP generate? It's only two ATPs. That is what your textbook comes out. Or your biochemistry textbook, which they mention glycolysis generates only two ATPs. They are mentioned this individually, which is not connected to aerobic respiration. Now for bacteria to survive, because there's only two ATPs, is that right? 
So how do you do, how do you survive? They have to go through fermentation process. Now, we're gonna mention later on, but we can make a, a briefly mention here. This is pretty much is lactic acid. Just give you an example. We'll be going through, uh, uh, sorry, a pyruvate become lactic acid. I'll draw here, it's pyruvate. If it's fermentation, then become acidic acid. So you know fermentation lots of the time, it is have acid generate. At this stage what happened is this NADH will be oxidized, become NAD plus. NAD plus, this is the one you can understand is there is a vacancy there, can carry on electron. Because of this electron carrier could be recycled. Therefore, they could be part of to combat the only two ATP generates the fermentation. Because that can be recycled all the time. That's why only two ATPs, but bacteria can still survive. Okay, that's something else. We'll mention this later, later on when we talk about uh, the cheese making, wine manufacturing, all those stuff. Okay, so here we will say um, glycolysis as part of the aerobic respiration, this will generate ATPs at the end. Okay, so in here we will see some of them right here. Glycerolidehyde 3 phosphates become 1 3 biphosphoglycerate, which is related to the NAD, reduced to the NADH2. This is we call it some oxidative phosphorylation. And right here, it is actually going through substrate level phosphorylation. Now, we will mention these later on. What's the difference between them? Okay? So, this part we finished. And we come out with the pyruvates. Okay, we come out with, with the pyruvates. Next one, we are going to a TCA cycle. So, this is uh, not here, uh, will be pyruvate. And the pyruvate are going to TCA cycle. First of all, they are going through a transition step. The transition step with become a cytochoa, a cytochoa enzyme A. Also coupled with NAD plus reduced to NADH2. They start from the acetyl-CoA, coenzyme A, so they start to have this big cycle. Okay, so we're going to draw this cycle. There is a little bit difference I want to mention regarding the bacteria and the eukaryotes. So first of all, since we talk about citric acid, of course there's a product that comes out called citric acid. Then the citric acid is going to build up, become isocitric acid. Okay, then so we're going to go down, become alpha keto glutarate. Then we go down right here, become suck C nail CoA, coenzyme A. Then we go a little bit flat, become suck C Nate. Then we go to the top, right here, become fumarate. And then on the top, go here, become malate. And then go here, which is have called oxaloacetate. Then go back to acetyl-CoA. 
Okay, and uh, this is called citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic cycle, different name. Okay, citric acid cycle. Now, sometimes in your biochemistry class, the instructor will say, go ahead and draw a structure. It happens all the time, then you're struggling about that. So I'm going to show you how my, what my understanding about drawing that. Uh, can you move the camera a little bit on, on the side? Just cover, make sure it's covered on the side. Right there. Okay. So first of all, you need to know the structure of citric acid, what it looks like. Or well, some textbooks say the citrate, it's the same thing. Citric acid is COOH, CH2, C, C, O, O, H, O, H, C, H, 2, and then C, O, O, H. It's a very wrong. Have three carboxy exposed. Okay, then what is isocitric acid? Isocitric acid is this guy moves down. Hydroxy bonds moves down. So what does that look like? C, O, O, H, C, H, 2, C, C, O, O, H. Go here, yes, H. Go down, is O, H, and C, H, and C, O, O, H. So this is isocitric acid. Now, some of the textbook, between these, there is a transition step. Some of the textbook I mentioned. Right now, in, uh, in my microbiology textbooks, they already take it out. Biochemistry books they still have. So the transition step consists a conitate. Now what it looks like, it is very similar to this guy, which is COOH, CH2, C, COOH, then goes here is, um, I believe so it is C, become, um, like that. Let me double check. Because this one, CH, so remove this. So the trans transition step like that, okay? Cis aconic gases, then they become, so this one usually they don't mention. Just so wanna double check it's correct, CH2, CH2, CH, um, CH2, CO, HCH. Yes, okay, like that. This aconic tate. Then it becomes isocitric acid as it go, goes down here. Now, then they become alpha ketoglutarate. What is that? At this stage, what they're gonna happen is so you're gonna remove carbon dioxide. And also happened is NAD will be reduced to NADH2. Okay, so therefore, what is alpha, ket alpha ketoglutarate looks like? COOH, CH2, goes here, CH2, C, and COOH. This is alpha ketoglutarate. Now, alpha ketoglutarate go to succinocoa. So also gonna happen is remove one carbon dioxide, and also, there is NAD reduced to NAD H2. So what it gonna be looks like, in the structure here is COOH, CH2, CH2, and SCOA. Now, COA, it's a very long, by itself, is a very long chain. 
So we basically just write SCOA. Succino COA. Okay. Succino COA become succinate. What is the succinate looks like? COH, CH2, CH2, then will be CO. Oh, just like this. This guy is CH2, CH2. Saxino C, Saxino COA. Alpha keto glutarate. Saxino COA, then becomes CH2, CH2, C. This is correct. Then it's COOH. Okay, that's succinate. Then succinate here become fumarate. These two are gonna gum part of that. So here rely on is FAD reduced to FADH2. So when the hydrogen is gone, same as here, same as here, they all need is the hydrogenase. Okay, so what about the formal rate looks like? The formal rate will looks like COOH, CH, double bonds, and COOH. Okay, the uh, formal rate is there, then become malate. This is not stable. So double bonds is always not stable. So you're going to be add a water there, which is called hydrogenation. Or so, sorry, uh, hydration. Okay, so we're going to add a water back. So what is a malate looks like? COOH, CH, OH, CH2, and the COOH. This is the malate. Okay, then you have HOCHO2 there. Seems like it's very not very stable, is that right? Every time when you see the hydroxy bonds, it's not very stable. He's going to remove it again, and especially the hydrogen atoms. So here happen again is NAD reduced to NAD H2, and also rely on uh, the hydrogenase. Okay, so what is the oxaloacetate looks like? So there will be COOH, CH, that's not really, CHO, and becomes CH2, and COOH. That's oxaloacetate. Okay, what is the acetyl-CoA looks like? CH3, COO, SCOA. And the pyruvate is CH3, COO, and the COOH on the top. Okay? That's a process. Now here, when you see these happens, it always is a dehydrogenase because the hydrogen is transferred to NAD. That's why the NAD plus is always reduced to the NADH2. And here is FADH. FAD reduced to the FADH2. Okay, how many ATP are going to generate? Now we're going to count how many places happened is oxidative phosphorylation because related to the NAD reduced to NADH2. So we can circle, there is a one right here for NAD reduced to NADH2. The second is right here. The third is right here. I never forgot there's a transition step is right here. So how many? There is four place happened is NAD reduced to NAD H2. So how many ATP generate? It is three ATPs. How many places is FAD reduced to the FADH2? 
is right here. So there will be one place happened is FAD reduced to FAD H2. This will be two ATPs. Now never forget, in the citric acid cycle, there is a substrate level for sporation happens right here. Is succinyl-CoA becomes succinate, what is that? Is usually is GT, GDP becomes GTP. Okay, now here the GTP is equals ATP. So there is a one more, is add one ATPs. So what's the what's total? This is 15 ATPs. Now remember, pyruvate generated from the glycolysis is two. Both of them going through the citric acid cycle. So therefore, this guy will be multiplied by two, so total is 30 ATPs. And remember, there is eight ATPs generated through the glycolysis, if it's part of the aerobic respiration, and the 30 ATPs is generated here going through the complete citric acid cycle. So if you add up them together, how many ATPs if we use, we use all the methods? So total is 38 ATPs. Now remember, this is for a bacteria. Now for UK youths, what's the number? That's what you learned in your textbook is 36 ATPs. Now where is that two comes from? So we have to minus two ATPs. Well, there is a different calculation in the text box. They show you how to do it. But the easiest way to understanding where it happens for the aerobic respiration for a bacteria is cell membrane system. Where it happens for eukaryotes is a system called mitochondria. Is that right? When you have a mitochondria, there is a membrane system. So you have to pass in through the membrane, like you go to the park, you have to pay the tickets. Therefore, there are two ATPs, is like a ticket of the gate. So that's why you have to hybridize two ATPs. So at the end, for UK use, is 36 ATPs. Okay, so this is the whole process. What we talk about is aerobic respiration. Now, we have two things I have mentioned. Some of parts of that we mentioned is going through oxidative phosphorylation. Some of them are easily coming out from the substrate level phosphorylation. Now, what is the difference between that? So we want to talk about that a little bit. So first of all, uh, substrate level phosphorylation. So what is that? So I want to mention that this. Lots of the people understanding the difference between substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation is they will simply say substrate level phosphorylation is without electron transport chain, do it by itself. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. But why they can do without electron transport chain? So we want to talk a little bit more. So first of all, um, you know that the ATP could be hydrolyzed, become ADP, and with a phosphate, or vice versa. So for ATP itself, there is ability to transfer phosphates. Now what's ability for that? We call it a potential. Phosphate transfer power. We mentioned about that in our other textbook. Now what is that? What number is that? This number relates to the free energy delta G. This is approximately is about minus 42 kJ per mole. Then what is the potential phosphate transfer power? We get an absolute value, which equals 42. 
Now, why some of the chemicals? If you go back here, you will see kind of like 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. And you also going to see 2-phosphoglycerate. Uh, Phosphoenopyruvates. Why this type of the chemical can be transfer phosphates? Because people do the same calibration. They do the same formula to see the potential phosphate, phosphor transfer power. Let's say phosphoenopyruvate. Their delta G is very high, it's almost minus 69 kJ per ml. So that means this power, this potential phosphor, phosphate transfer power is 69. And this is larger than 42. That's why they can be transfer uh, phosphate without the electron transport chain, and then they do it naturally. So, in a very simple, what is substrate level, level phosphorylation, which means the chemicals have stronger phosphate transfer power than ATP itself. So, give me another example. Let's say uh, glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate, although it has a phosphate, but it cannot do substrate level phosphorylation. Why? Because this delta G is minus 13 kg per mole. That is less than the ATP itself. So therefore, although glucose 6-phosphate, you seems like the, the, the chemical name looks like it.